Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. What? A friend. Well, beloved. Beloved, we are on day 61. 61 in the name of Jesus Christ. We glorify the name of the Lord for allowing us into this time to be able to broadcast and transmit this from Nairobi, Kenya. It's the 27th of February, 2022, and it's at 10.35 in the a.m. We give glory to God for allowing us to appear here and to also share and teach the nations and also encourage you to read the word, the word of God even together in the name of Jesus. We want to talk about vows. We want to talk about uh, covenants, a little bit about covenants and about how we pray and God is going to help us. Beloved of the Lord, so get to share, get to, uh, you know, just get to share the, the broadcast with others. If it's the first time on this channel on YouTube, uh, kindly do be able to subscribe so that you can be able to find it another time and we bless the name of the Lord in Jesus name so I welcome you beloved of the Lord I welcome you in the most excellent name of our Lord Jesus Christ welcome 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 says in the book of first corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 i received from the lord what i also gave unto you the night the lord jesus christ was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after the supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks he took the cup and said this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this every time you drink it in remembrance of me for whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes beloved we appear again to share in the communion and to be able to pray and glorify the name of the Lord even in this time we glorify the Lord and even receive all the praises from him as we can as we continue as we continue to grow in faith and in knowledge and in, you know, revelations from the Lord as he enables us in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's pray for the elements. Father, we thank you for the bread. We thank you for the cup. We thank you for this wonderful time, even as we partake of this wonderful uh, moments oh father we pray that god you will open our eyes our spiritual eyes to see and our ears to hear you in the name of jesus we thank you for this moment even as we get on to the 61st day of this season as we continue to pray and read the word of god so we thank you and we bless you in jesus name we pray with thanksgiving amen let's partake of the bread together Partake of the cup. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word, we thank you for your goodness, we thank you for your majesty, we thank you for allowing us into this time, O oh God, that we can be able to just glorify your name and magnify your name, for you are a good God. We honor you, Father. 
we bless you for bringing us into this time we bless you for enabling and establishing us lord in this time in the name of our lord jesus christ day 61 we give glory to god psalm 61 thank you jesus <laughs> Psalm 61, that's where we are at in the name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 61, the word of the Lord says, Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth, I call to you. I call to you. As I call, my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Let me read verse 2 again. It says, From the ends of the earth, I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. Verse number four. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. For you have heard my vows, O God. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. It says in verse 6, increase the days of the king's life, his years for many generations. May he be enthroned in God's presence forever. Appoint your love and faithfulness to protect him. Increase. Huh? It says, let me start again. Psalm 61. It says, hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth, I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. I long to dwell in your tent forever. And take refuge. And take refuge. In the shelter of your wings. For you have heard my vows, O God. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Verse 6. Increase the days of the king's life. His years for many generations. May he be enthroned in the king's presence forever. Appoint your love and your faithfulness. Psalm 61. To protect him, verse number 8, then will I ever sing praise to your name and fulfill my vows day after day. Beloved, I come to bring to you a very crucial and critical um, aspect of our work with God and also about the Spirit. You need to understand that the words you speak every day, they constitute of either growing or not growing in the spirit for you. So if you make vows, you know that you must be quick to fulfill them. The psalmist begins by bringing unto us, you know, this prayer. He's in a place of desperation. This is not one of the meek terms of David. In fact, it says, for the director of music with stringed instruments of David, he says, hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth, I call to you. There is a cry. There is a prayer that is not an ordinary prayer. It's a cry. That says, hear my cry, O God. It's a cry. It say, hear my cry. It's a cry to the Lord. Say, hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth, I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. For you have heard my vows. You see this? You have heard my vows. In Numbers chapter number 20, chapter number 30 verse 2 
We read something. When a man makes a vow to the Lord or takes an oath to obligate himself by a pledge, he must not break his word. He must do everything he has said. Beloved, this is where at times, you know, in church, you hear the pastor come up and say, I'm looking for people who want to be able to do this assignment or this assignment or this assignment. And at that time, because it's, uh, you know, maybe it's uh, ministry Sunday, everybody's excited. They sign up and say, I'm going to be in the, in the marriage couples. I'm going to be in the children. I'm going to be in this. Then after you get into those places, now you look back and you say, hey, I am very busy. I cannot be able to do it. Now remember this. You do not vow to man. You vow to the Lord. We are seeing soon in the book of Ecclesiastes about how this is very key for you to achieve spiritual growth and for you to be able to ascend to the place where you need to go. That's why the proverb keeps reminding us about our words. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 1. The word of the Lord says this in Proverbs 20 verse 1. It says, wine is a mocker and beer is a brawler. The one who is led astray by this is not wise. It says, a king's wrath is like a roar of a lion. He who hungers, he who angers him for faith is life. Verse number 3. It is to a man's honor to avoid strife, but every fool is quick to quarrel. Proverbs 20 verse 4. A sluggard does not plow in season, and at, at harvest time he looks but finds nothing. Verse 5. The purposes of a man's heart are deep waters, but a man of understanding draws them out. Verse 6. Many a man claims to have unfailing love, but a faithful man who can find. Verse number 7. The righteous man leads a blameless life. Blessed are his children after him. Verse 8, when a king sits on his throne to judge, he winnows out evil with his eyes. Who can say, I have kept my heart pure, I am clean and without sin? Verse number 10, differing weights and differing measures, the Lord detests them both. Verse 11, even a child is known by his actions, by whether his conduct is pure and right. Verse 12, ears that he here and eyes that see the lord has made them both now let me mention something about this verse because it's very very crucial for you to understand about what this verse is talking about ears that hear and eyes that see is something that is very rare in fact the scripture teaches us and says that the fool and the wise man has his eyes in his head it says the ears that hear and eyes that see, the Lord has made them both. May your eyes see, may your ears hear in the name of Jesus. Proverbs 20 verse number 13. It says do not love sleep or you will grow poor. Stay awake and you will have food to spare. It says in verse 14 of Proverbs 20. It is no good, it's no good, says the buyer. Then off he goes and boasts about his purchase. Verse 15. Gold there is, and rubies in abundance, but lips that speak knowledge are a rare jewel. Lips that speak knowledge are a very rare jewel. Verse 16. Take the garment of one who puts up security for a stranger. Hold it in pledge if he does it for a wayward woman. Verse 17. Food gained by fraud tastes sweet to a man but he ends up with a mouthful of gravel a mouthful of gravel is the place of burial it's not that the food that he's eating is turning into become some some uh, some gravel no the gravel is coming because the food that has been gained by fraud tastes sweet to a man but it ends up with mouthful of gravel it says in 18 make plans by seeking advice. If you wage war, obtain guidance. Verse 19, it says, A gossip betrays a confidence, so avoid a man who talks too much. In this journey of 150 days of Psalms, the Lord has continued to shape. You know, let me tell you, this word does everything. Absolutely everything that you are looking for in the scripture, everything that you are looking for in life, it is in the word of God. And 
to, to draw out those purposes from the word of God. We need to be in a place. Ha, we need to be in a place. It says making plans by seek, make plans by seeking advice. If you wage war, obtain guidance. Guidance, the best guidance is from the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 11 verse 14. The word of the Lord tells us, A gossip betrays a confidence, but a trustworthy man keeps a secret. Proverbs again 24 verse 6. It says, If you are waging war, you need guidance. For victory has many advisors. For victory, many advisors. And here we are, again on Proverbs 11, verse 13. I love the word, the book of Proverbs, because Proverbs shapes our decisions, shapes our thinking. We can be able to see, how do I react to this matter? How do I react to this matter? Is that you don't need to have a retreat moment, whereby you say, now, I need to know God. Let me go for a, retreat, a big retreat for one month. Then I can come back and apply it on the, on the life. God will bring difficult situations into your life that need the application of the word. They need application of the word. If you are a wife, you need to apply it in your marriage. If you are a husband, you need to apply it in your marriage as well. If you are a child, you need to apply it in your, in your following your parents. If you are a young man, what does it say to the young man? I write to you, young man, because you are strong and you have overcome the evil one. What does it say again? How can a young man keep his way pure by keeping and heeding his heart on, you know, the word of God? So in this stage where you are young and you are feeling confused about life, you don't need to be confused because God knows about you. He's with you and he will see you through that youth. So in that youth, you need to grow in the goodness of God and the majesty of God because God is on the throne and God answers prayer. In the name of Jesus. God answers prayer. God answers prayer. In a way that only he can. So avoid a man who talks too much. Even yourself. Avoid yourself if you talk too much. Make sure if you talk too much. You talk the words of God. If you talk too much. Talk the word of God. Share it. Meditate upon it. Memorize it. Tangaza neno la Bwana. Kama unaongea maneno mengi na kinywa chako, tangaza neno la Bwana. Let me read this in for you in Swahili. Methali 20 mstari wa 20. Let me nisome na kizuksi ya Kiswahili kidogo kwa sababu ya ndugu zangu wale wananisikiliza Tanzania na wengine huko. It says this, Amlaanie, uh -huh. This is Proverbs 20 verse 19. Uh -huh. Mwenye kitango atasingizia ufunua siri. Basi usishirikiane nae afunuaye midomo yake sana. That's what he says in Swahili. Avoid one who talks too much. Proverbs 20 verse 20. If a man curses his father or mother, his lamp will be snuffed out in pitch darkness. Proverbs 20 verse 21. An inheritance gained too quickly will not be blessed at the end. I want you to pray this prayer and say, I have a portion in, my, in this land. I have a portion in this land. I have a portion in this land. In the name of Jesus, the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a delightful inheritance. In the name of Jesus. Amen. He says in verse 22, Don't say, I'll pay you back for this wrong. Wait for the Lord and he will deliver you. It says in verse 23, the Lord detests differing weights and dishonest scales do not please him. It says in verse 24, a man's steps are directed by the Lord. How then can anyone understand his own way? Proverbs 20 verse 25, if, um, if it is a trap for a man to dedicate something rashly and only later to consider his vows. I come to mention to you this scripture again about vows. Because, beloved of the Lord, when we go into church, when we go into the things of God, and then we say, maybe you are watching something online, and then I say, I want to be a part of this, I want to be a part of this. And then, midway, you go back and say, ah, and hereby you have already committed yourself, you are already dedicating yourself rashly. Do not dedicate to something rashly. It is your own trap, because now it begins to lead some openings into your situations that don't glorify God. One, you lack integrity. When you stand before the throne of, of, of the King of Kings, 
he can see your heart. He can see, you know, you're coming to this place. You say one thing, you go to the other place, you say another thing. Especially if you are prone to making vows, you are prone to vowing things. The Bible says it is a trap for a man to dedicate something rashly and only consider his vows later. So vows are very key. Let me explain to you about vows a little bit more. Let me just mention to you what really are vows. Because if at all you don't understand vows, you'll realize and you'll see them here a lot in the scriptures. That when a man vows before the Lord, he must not in any way yeah, go back and say, ah, ah, I did not vow, I did not vow, I did not vow like that. You know? Proverbs 10 verse 19 says, When the words are many, sin is not absent. But he who holds his tongue is wise. As in, we started the year, a lot of us, with prayers and fasting. And it's exciting when praying in January, you know, when the year is beginning. Everybody is excited about it. But the 21 days runs out very quickly. The 40 days runs out very quickly. And then, now after the 40 days, now after the 21 days of fasting, that's now when you realize, okay, we've been praying, we've been fasting. Now we need to apply the word of God. Notice what happened when Jesus fasted 40 days. The thing, the, what happened to him on the 40th day was major temptation. So in the first, he took time to study the word. He took time to be in the word. He took time to analyze, to be sensitive. So when the devil comes in and is telling him that, you know what, I will give you this whole kingdom to be yours. The Lord Jesus says to him, it is written, you shall not test the Lord your God. When he says throw yourself, when he says throw yourself from this place, God will command his angels charge over you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Notebook. If you have a notebook, it will be good for you to write about vows. Because vows are what we call oaths in a covenant. Uh, let me explain to you about covenant a little bit. Covenants are about agreements between one party and another party. We are in the new covenant. That is the New Testament. Is what is called the new covenant. Covenant. The old covenant was the one that God had with Moses and with Abraham and all that. Now we are in a new agreement. The oaths of this covenant, the vows of this covenant, one of them is that I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. <laughs> I'm always excited reading this word because I know the famine is coming, beloved. I am telling you, the farming of the word of God is coming. Amos 8 verse 11. Where it will not be possible for you to get the word of God easily. So when you can, get as much word of God as possible. This knowledge is brought to you by Proverbs 20 verse 25. It says that a man's steps, uh, it says that it is a trap for a man to dedicate something rashly and later consider his vows. Later, consider his vows. Vows are consisting of words. Vows are consisting of words. Vows. Mm. Vows. You need to check this thing very well. You need to check what, what vows have I made. You know, maybe probably when you are making um, vows, you know, when you are making vows for your wedding and for, for serving God, when, what does it mean? Eh? Eh? Vow. A solemn promise. A vow is a solemn promise. Or assertion. Yeah. You say, I will do it. You go and tell your, your pastor, I will always stand with you. And then now, tomorrow you move away. This is a broken vow. See, vows are critical, beloved of the Lord. And that's why it's important to understand these things from the word of God. He says it is a trap for a man to dedicate something rashly and only later to consider his vows. He says, a wise king, we knows out the wicked. He dries out the threshing wheel over them. Verse 7, 27. The lamp of the Lord searches the spirit of man. It searches out his inmost being. Verse 28. Love and faithfulness keep a king safe. Through love, his throne is made secure. 
Proverbs 20 verse 29. The glory of young men is their strength. Gray hair, the splendor of the old. Proverbs 20 verse 30. Blows and wounds cleanse away evil. And beatings purge the innermost being. That is Proverbs chapter 20. We go now to Ecclesiastes 5 by the grace of God. Ecclesiastes 5. Ecclesiastes 5. It says, verse 1. Again, this is also talking to us about vows. So it's important for us to listen in what the scripture is saying. Listen. It says, guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Go near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools and do not, who do not know what they do wrong. Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth. So let your words be few. Verse number three. As a dream comes when there are many cares, so the speech of a fool when there are many words. Verse number four. When you make a vow to God, do not delay in fulfilling it. Beloved, this scripture is helping us a lot. When, you know, even in Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse, uh, verse number 21, Deuteronomy 23, Deuteronomy 23, Deuteronomy is uh, after... Leviticus, we come numbers and then Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 21. It says this. It says, If you make a vow to the Lord your God, don't be slow to pay it, for the Lord your God will certainly demand it of you, and you will be guilty of sin. You see that? Just a vow can stop you from achieving eternal life. Because sin will not allow us to enter into the kingdom of God. Sin will not allow us into, in, to enter the kingdom of God. Sin will not allow you to enter, to touch the things that are not of God. That are of God. Sin will not allow you to do it. So, when you make a vow to God... Do not delay in fulfilling it. I have made a vow. I've told God, Lord, I desire everywhere I go to lead people to the Lord. Let me show you about vows and their power. In the book of Judges, chapter 11, verse 35. Jasper, there's a man called... Uh, let's go there quickly. Leviticus 11. I ah, know, Judges. Judges 11, Judges 11 verse 35, yes. It will do well for you to do this study. Listen to what he says. The man was called Jephthah. The Jephthah made a vow before God, you know, and made a declaration and said that whatever comes out of the door of my house, I will sacrifice to you. In verse 35, when he saw her... Huh, because in verse 34 it says, When Jephthah returned to his home, who should come out to meet him but his daughter dancing to the sound of timbrels? She was an only child, except for he, for her he had neither son nor daughter. When he saw her, he tore his clothes. He said, Oh no, you have brought me down. I'm devastated. I have made a vow to the Lord that I cannot break. Vows. It is now that people are just vowing anyhow to one another. They decide to just vow on something and then just break it tomorrow. And they think it is okay. There are certain things you need to look back and think. What have I vowed about? What have I solemnly promised? Even young men who you vowed to your... That girl, you did not marry her. You vowed to her. You vowed. You said, I'll never leave you. I'll never die. I'll die for you. You vowed. Then you went off. Moved, went maybe to another town. When you came back, you married another one. That vow is holding you somewhere. Business vows. People will make business with one another and say, let's do pro politicians. My goodness. May the Lord have mercy on politicians. Because they vow very quickly. And then they break the vows. Now when they break the vows, those are covenants that are broken. Now let me explain a little bit about covenants. 
covenants are powerful and they are performed on altars. Altars are the where covenants are made. That's why you notice that there are particular places people go in Kenya here, Nairobi, Kenya. You hear we are coming to do something in Bomas of Kenya. Why? Because there are altars there of major tribes. They have been raised there. You go there, you find that this is how the Kikuyus lived, this is how the Luos, this is what. See it there in Bomas of Kenya. It's an altar. You see them going to some particular, there are locations for altars in the nation of Kenya. I'm giving you an example. Going to San Francisco, there are altars. In the Silicon Valley, there are altars that are raised where, argument, uh, where agreements are made and vows are put up. Did you know that this gadget you carry, your mobile phone, is full of vows? You make vows to software companies. When you are opening that particular WhatsApp group, you are not WhatsApp group. When you are open, you are, you are downloading that particular software. It asks you a question. It said, "Do you accept to the terms and conditions of this particular software?" Then you say, "I agree." You don't read the EULA. We call it the EULA, End User License Agreement. That is what is the the vows you have between you. And the person you are making a covenant to. So when you are saying yes on that software, you are, as, you are saying, I am agreement. I'm in agreement. I'm in agreement. I'm in agreement with the covenant. The agreement. You understand? So vows are powerful. If I told you are building a church or buying a land for the church, don't be quick to make a vow. It is better. The Bible says, verse 5. It is better not to vow. It is better not to make a vow than to make a vow and not fulfill it. It says it is better not to vow. You see, this is the thing, beloved of the Lord. As we are going on in this journey of 150 days of Psalms, God by the Holy Spirit is teaching us. Together we are learning. Let me tell you, there's a time when we shall reach 150. There are times when God is now going to say, okay, now we want you to go do this, do that, do this. You are qualified enough. But people want to wake up in the morning and say, I, I, I tap with that anointing. Say, I tap with that anointing. You cannot buy anointing. Let me tell you, let your money perish with you. Peter said to the man, Simon, the, the sorcerer, who said that, you know, I see you have the Holy Spirit. You are laying hands on the people. And the people are opening their eyes. The people are speaking in tongues. Can we buy? Can I buy a little bit of this anointing? Can I buy a little bit? Let me tell you, the anointing is costly. There is a sacrifice to it. And the sacrifice comes by obedience. You cannot say, I will run to the mountains and stay there for 20 days, I will get an anointing. If at all you are not obedient in the one thing, you will go there, be hungry, be dusty, come back weak in your body, and you wonder why things are not working. Whereby God just wants a very simple thing from you. Very simple. He says, simple obedience, don't make vows, reduce your talking, reduce your words, reduce the things you say, reduce the promises, and if you have overpromised, there is also a way to work on it. He says in the book of Proverbs chapter 6, that if you have been ensnared by the words of your mouth, then do this, my son, to, and to free yourself. Let me show you this, because this is powerful, beloved. Whatever I'm teaching you is something that is very powerful. And you need to know that, yes, did you know that you can be able to miss the next level where God is taking you because of just lack of obedience? You say, I know, I know, I know. I know. If you, if you find yourself saying, I know, there's a problem. Because God wants us to be in a fellowship with Him. A sweet fellowship. Constantly, like you show up like you don't know anything. You say, Lord, teach me, help me. I don't know anything. I need you to help me. See, listen to Proverbs chapter 6. It says, my son, if you have put up security for your neighbor, if you have shaken hands in pledge for a stranger, you have trapped, been trapped by what you said, ensnared by the words of your mouth. So do this, my son, to free yourself. Since you have fallen into your neighbor's hands, go to the point of exhaustion and give your neighbor no rest. Allow no sleep to your eyes, no slumber to your eyelids. Free yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, like a bird from the snare of the fowler. 
This is the word of the Lord that must be established in you. If you make a vow to God and delay fulfilling it, then come to Proverbs 6 and free yourself like a gazelle. Don't be quick to make a vow. God will always bring you back to that vow. And say, okay, you made this vow, okay, go ahead, fulfill it. And say, oh, you know God, I did not, God does not even want you to vow in the first place. He did not want you to say, I will do this, you know. Beloved, Ecclesiastes 5, verse number 4. If you make a vow to God, do not delay in fulfilling it. He has no pleasure in fools. Only fools do not fulfill vows. Fulfill your vow. Verse number 5. It is better not to vow than to make a vow and not fulfill it. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 6. Do not let your mouth lead you into sin. And don't protest to the temple messenger. My vow was a mistake. So when we began the journey, and I said to the Lord, I desire 10 weeks of fasting. I will. It's not something that you can tell the whole church to do. Because there are those who will be quick to say, yes, let's do the 70 days of fasting. But the moment you, the rubber hits the road, that's where you become some challenges. So this is what I share with my friends. If I told you you've made a vow like that, you said, Lord, I'm going to fast for the next 21 days. And then day two, you, are, you go to your cousin's birthday and you forget that you made a vow to fast before God. You know what? God did not even need you to say you are fasting in the first place. For him to bless you and leave you to the next level. He did not need you to fast. But you, you are by your own mouth. You have opened it. And you have said, I want to fast. Know that this vow you have made now. Heaven is very serious and attentive. The angels of God record everything we have here. They have technology that we do not know. The technology of heaven is incredible. How does the 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 uh, the gold look as clear as glass how does gold look like that what kind of fire made it like that how do you make a building with jasper and precious stones how can you be able to have an a creature that has the face of a man and yet it has six wings with eyes all over look at that kind of a technology from heaven incredible P philip is preaching here he comes, baptizes somebody here, then he goes to the next town. That technology was there before any technology that can happen. When man created the fastest aircraft, they gloried in it. And that led to its downfall. The Concorde was the fastest, one of the fastest planes. I don't think they have them anymore. You see, God has technology you don't know of. And that's the one we are employing in the end time. The technology of heaven is the one that we want to tap into. We want to tap into the technology of God. We want to tap into it so that we vow what is in his heart and mind concerning us. We are not vowing onto things that are vain glory, but we vow on the things that are in the Lord. You make those vows that are, you know, that are, you, you have put thought into them. Make a vow and fulfill it. Make a vow and fulfill it. Make a vow and fulfill it. I say it again. Make a vow and fulfill it. Ecclesiastes 5, 6. Don't let your mouth lead you into sin and don't protest to the temple messenger. My vow was a mistake. Why should God be angry at what you say and destroy the work of your hands? Much dreaming and many words are meaningless. Therefore, Stand in awe of God. Verse 8. If you see the poor oppressed in a district and justice and rights denied, don't be surprised at such things. For one official is eyed by a higher one and over them both eyes others higher still. The increase from the land is taken by all. The king himself profits from the fields. Whoever loves money never has money enough. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. This too is meaningless. Verse 11. As goods increase, so do those who consume them. And what benefit are they to the owner except to feast his eyes on them? Verse 12. The sleep of a laborer is sweet 
whether he eats little or much. But the abundance of a rich man permits him no sleep. Verse number 13. I have seen a grievous evil under the sun. Wealth hoarded to the harm of its owner. Verse 14. Or wealth lost through some misfortune. So that when he has a son, there is nothing left for him. Verse number 15 of Ecclesiastes 5. Naked, a man comes from his mother's womb. And as he comes, so he departs. He takes nothing from his labor. And he can carry the, that he can carry in his hand. Verse 16. This too is a grievous evil. As a man comes, so he departs. And what does he gain since he toils for the wind? Verse 17. All his days he eats in darkness with great frustration, affliction, and anger. Verse 18. Then I realized that it is good and proper for a man to eat and drink and find satisfaction in his toilsome labor under the sun during the few days of life God has given him. For this is his lot. Verse 19. Moreover, when God gives a man wealth and possessions and enables him to enjoy them, to accept his lot and be happy in his work, this is a gift of God. He seldom reflects on the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with the gladness of heart. Hallelujah! I pray that God will keep you occupied with the gladness of heart. In the name of Jesus, may God occupy you with the gladness of heart that every vow that you make, you fulfill. Hey, glory to God, I'm so excited about this. Every vow that you shall make, you shall fulfill. In the name of Jesus, amen. So now we head out to the book of Le Leviticus. Leviticus, Leviticus, rich, rich book. You know, I've been looking here in my land, Kenya, and I've been looking at some of the videos that come up on the talk shows. I saw and caught my attention of, um, on, on national TV, there was a story about a lady whose mother took her husband. Now, when you look at that, for us to say, oh, this is very sad, but this is a curse that is operating. The only way that it can help this person is by them coming to Jesus and not coming for sympathies. Sympathies cannot separate you from this kind of challenge. Because Leviticus 9, uh, 18 shows us about these things. Leviticus 20. No, no, it's actually Leviticus 21. What a joy. In the next six days, we'll be done with Leviticus. These are rules for holy living and rules for the priests. This is Leviticus. Um, Leviticus is actually the third book uh, of um, Leviticus 21. Is the third book. It's actually holiness and the priests. This actually is something that we can apply to ourselves. And then also we are going to Hebrews. So this is going to be so exciting. Hallelujah. Leviticus 21. It says, The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the priests, the son of Aaron, and say to them, A priest must not make himself ceremonially unclean for any people who die, for any of his people who die, except for a close relative, such as his mother or father, his son or his daughter, his brother. Or an unmarried sister who is dependent on him since he has, she has no husband. For her, he must make himself unclean. By being unclean is that when they die, you need God, God, God. The priest should not come near the dead. When he comes near the dead, then he makes himself unclean. This is what the, the whole story is about. So it says in verse 3, or verse 4, He must not make himself unclean for people related to him by marriage. And so defile himself. Now see this is powerful beloved. Priests must not shave their heads. Or shave off the hedges of their beards. Or cut their bodies. Now this one is something that is not. What we can say universally that. We should not cut our beards. We should not cut our hair. It is not in that direction that I am taking you. Because there is something and somewhere we are going. Because all these were pagan practices. Practices in Egypt. 
practices in Canaan, practices of the Canaanites, practices of the Egyptians. These were practices of pagan worship. When people die, they shave their head, they cut off their beards. This is what they were doing. They cut their bodies. Mm. Mm. Cutting of the bodies is still there today. It's called tattooing. People tattoo their bodies. They think it's okay. Even if you write the name Jesus here, it is not right. But if you wrote it before, the blood of Jesus covers you. Just cover your tattoos and serve God. You don't need to be proud of your sins, your past sins. You don't need to keep telling people, I am the robber who used to rob people on this street. Uh -uh, that does not qualify you. What qualifies you is the blood of Jesus. Let the others be the one to say, this was the man who used to persecute the church. But nowhere do you see Paul write and say, I used to be the one who was killing people. Uh -uh. The reality is found in the Lord Jesus. That's where the reality is found. When we come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, when we depend on him, when we remain on him, when we remain with him, that's where we need to be. Hallelujah! So, he says, priests must not shave their heads or shave off the edges of their beards or cut their bodies. They must be holy to their God and must not profane the name of their God because they represent the offering. They present the offerings made to the Lord by fire. The food of their God, they are to be holy. They must not marry women defiled by prostitution or divorced from their husbands because priests are holy to their God regard them as holy because they offer the food of your God consider them holy because I the Lord am holy I who make you holy beloved let me mention something we are now a priesthood of believers. You and I are considered as priesthood of believers. Now, these, these things that you are reading here in the scriptures, we apply them in our life in that we are now the priesthood of believers. We don't defile ourselves in the place of our work with God. And this is why it's so critical, beloved, to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the second one is as good as this. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. This is the place where God moves. The place of loving our neighbor. The place of loving our neighbors. That's the place where God dwells. That's the place where God is at. <laughs> That's the place where God remains. You are to regard them as holy because they offer the food of your God. You see, when you're giving your offerings to the men of God, to the people of God, to your church, to your priest, even to a channel like this, what we are doing here, we are receiving the, the offering on behalf of God. So, you, the, the priest now, the person who is operating in in this kind of revelation, must know they offer the food of God. Worship is the food of God. God does not eat meat, does not eat food, he does not eat money. All this paper is not useful. What is happening in Ukraine right now is in the word of God. And God has prepared the Christians of Ukraine. Ukraine has the largest number of messianic Jews in all the nations in Europe. Ukraine, powerful place. God has prepared Ukraine for such an hour. Wait for the testimonies. I have seen some already on the, on the videos. I'm seeing videos here. Testimonies of God's provision. Yani God just delivering somebody and you look at it and say, how did that happen? A huge missile hitting a building and after everything has gone on, they just hear the baby crying and the baby is in the other room. And the mother and the father were not in the house. They ran downstairs and they could not carry the baby. But when the missile hit the building, after everything settled down, they rushed into the building. They heard the baby crying. Fire is burning, but the baby is untouched. 
this is God in Ukraine. This is God in Russia. There is a soldier who is a Russian. I want to show you these things. He is flying his jet. And in his heart he's convinced he should not be bombing people. Then all of a sudden, phew, boom, he's hit from the back by the Ukraine plane. Now, I want to show you both sides of the coin about this God. So, he's trying to struggle with this plane. His plane is coming under fire. There's more guns hitting him. And this man is from Russia. They are the aggressor. But in his heart, he's like, Lord, have mercy on me. Please, Lord, I should not die today. Then, boosh, the jet opens up and he ejects. And all of a sudden, a big bomb hits that plane, becomes into a ball of fire, and the man goes down in a parachute. And he falls in an old dusty town where he's captured. This God is in Ukraine. This God is in Russia. Let me tell you, it's his time. When you are praying for Russia and you are praying for Ukraine and you are praying for Afghanistan and you are praying for Libya and you are praying for Syria and you are praying for Somalia, all these places where we have war and rumors of war in the nations of the earth, I want to tell you it is valid. Pray. Pray more. Because God is at work in those places. He has not departed. He's there. Leviticus 21 verse 7 says, They must not marry women defiled by prostitution or divorced from their husbands. Mm. Mm. See that? You see in verse 13 the requirements of these things. It says again, regard them as holy because they offer up the food of your God. Consider them holy because I, the Lord, am holy. I will, I who make you holy. If a priest's daughter defiles herself by becoming a prostitute, she disgraces her father. She must be burned in the fire. The same to a, uh, a priest's son. It's not just about the women, the, women, the girls. Nowadays, we have male prostitutes as well. This is what it was happening. These are powerful declarations here. It says the high priest, the one among his brothers who has had the anointing oil poured on his head and who has been ordained to wear the priestly garments, must not let his hair become unkempt or tear his clothes. You see, this thing is very serious with God. Pastor wale mnaika marastas kwa kichwa. Inasema aje apa. Sio mimi nimesema. Neno la Mungu. God is talking about garments. We cannot ignore this conversation about God. If he spoke about garments in the book of Leviticus, he's still speaking about garments today. We cannot profane the altar of the Lord by how we appear. We must remember. How you how you go to the gym should not be how you go for for swimming. You cannot go like that to the house of God. Even if that swimming costume is covered, you look very weird serving God and worshipping Him in clothes for the water. Or probably if you are a beekeeper, do you go wearing your beekeeping kit to work? We find you in the train wearing a beekeeping kit with, you know, bees. Or probably you are a firefighter. You are dressed in firefighting clothes. And then you are showing up in the market to buy things. People will wonder what is going on with you. So how do you think you can just come to the house of the Lord, dress the way you want, and then you think it is okay? It is not okay, beloved. Church with plasma to ambiani ukweli. We must tell each other the truth. But for me, I like to tell you this. I will not have a sermon called how to dress. Because we can never all of us have the same clothes. But we must have the same principle. That God is holy. We must be approaching him in a holy way. The firefighter will show up in a fire dressed the way he is. The, the swimming uh, person will show up dressed in the swimming clothes. The scuba diving kit. The guys who go deep 30 meters into the sea. They will wear a tank. Can you imagine somebody wearing an oxygen tank walking around the market? This is how you look with your breasts open. That is work for bedroom. You are supposed to wear like that. When it is bedroom time with your husband. So if you don't have a husband, don't wear bedroom clothes on the road or in the church. Wait for the appropriate time to wear for him those clothes just the two 
of you. Even your husband, your children should not see you like that. Ah uh ah. -uh. Wait a minute. If you go to swim with your children, carry another lesson to cover yourself. <laughs> your mother, your children do not start seeing your thighs there, my, my dear sister. Please, please. I love you. Whether you are in whether you are in Africa, you are in Europe, you are in China, it doesn't matter where you are. This scripture in Leviticus 21 is for us to receive and to know the things God loves and he delights in. He says that the high priest, the one among his brothers, Mm. Mm. You see this? Powerful scriptures. Verse 9. If a priest's daughter defiles himself by becoming a prostitute, she disgraces her father, she must be burned in the fire. Leviticus. Welcome, welcome, Korea, my dear sister. Verse Leviticus 21, verse 10. The high priest, the one his brothers, the one among his brothers who has the anointing point on his uh, the anointing oil poured on his head, who has been ordained to wear the priestly garment, must not, must not, must not let his hair become unkempt or tear his clothes. He must not enter the place where there is a dead body. He must not make himself unclean, even for his father or his mother, nor leave the sanctuary of his God or desecrate it, because he has been dedicated by the anointing oil of his God, I am the Lord. Leviticus 21, 13. The man he marries must be a virgin. He must not marry a widow, a divorced woman, or a woman defiled by prostitution, but only a virgin from his own people. For he will not defile his offspring among his people. I am the Lord who makes him holy. The Lord said to Moses, Leviticus 21, 16. Leviticus 21, 17. Say to Aaron, For the generations to come, none of your descendants who has a defect may come near to offer the food for his God. Now, in our application, this one does not talk about physical defect. Now, let me mention to you verse 18. No man who has any defect may come near. No man who is blind or lame disfigured or deformed no man with a crippled hand or a foot or who is hunchbacked or dwarfed or who has an eye defect or who has festering or running sores or damaged testicles all these things represent different things now they don't necessarily represent the physical defect no one will come near God with blindness, spiritual blindness. Hmm. Crushed testicles. Leviticus 22 verse 24. You are going to see that again. It says Leviticus 23 verse 1. It says no one who has, uh, no one who has been emasculated by crushing or cutting may enter the assembly of the Lord. So these ones were actually reasons. Somebody did not just have damaged testicles just like that. It was something that happened. It had to do with a vow. Somebody would enter into and have them receive damage. These are pagan ways, pagan practices that people used to do. So the Lord says, don't come near me with this thing. Probably some of these things we are seeing here, we do not we do not say don't bring a hunchback to church. No, it does not mean like that. There are so many dwarfs in Congo. You cannot say that they don't come to God. No, it's about spiritual. You must understand spiritually. Uh, it says in verse 21, No descendant of Aaron or the priests who has any defect is to come near the, to present offerings made to the Lord by the fire. He has a defect. He must not come near to offer the food of his God. Eh. Do you know God has food? <laughs> God has food. Eh. He may eat the most holy food of his God as well as the holy food. Ah, Lord, feed me your holy food. In the name of Jesus. I want to, I want to eat of your menu, O oh God. Feed me of your holy food. In Jesus' name. Amen. It says in Leviticus 21-23, Yet because of this defect, he must not go near the curtain or approach the altar. 
and so desecrate my sanctuary. I am the Lord who makes them holy. Verse 21, 24, it says, Leviticus 21, 24, So Moses told this to Aaron and his sons and to all the Israelites. That's Leviticus 21. Now we head out to, we head out to the wonderful um, book of Hebrews. Hallelujah. I'm so excited because we'll be able to pray at the top of the hour as we get on into um, concluding the broadcast. So we go into the book of Hebrews, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 5, Hebrews chapter 5. I want to still bring your attention back to vows. You must remember, if you made vows, and those vows that you made, you have broken them. Present yourself to God and say, Father, hallelujah. As you make that prayer, you are telling God, my Lord, I have vowed and broken my vows. Forgive me from broken vows. You pray and tell God, Father, every covenant I have entered into, knowingly or unknowingly, and the vows of it, eh? the oaths, the curses, all those things that come with the covenant. I denounce them. You know, in Africa here, we have a lot of opportunities where things are said to us. Sometimes things are said by people in authority while we are listening and giving them an open door. So they speak into our lives. And they bring limitation because you are saying, oh, this is my mother, this is my, my brother, this is my father, this is my uncle. You allow them to speak into your life. And if you don't understand that, then this person is speaking. You say, no, I cancel that in the name of Jesus. Hebrews 5, verse 1. Every priest is selected from among men. And is appointed to represent them in matters related to God. To offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray. Since he himself is subject to weakness. See this? This is why he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins as well as that of the sins of the people. Verse number 4. No one takes this honor upon himself. He must be called by God. Just as Aaron was. So Christ also did not take it upon himself the glory of becoming a high priest. But God said to him, you are my son. Today you become, have become your father. And he says in another place, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Verse 7. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Verse 8. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And, uh, and once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. And was designated by God to be high priest. In the order of Melchizedek. Now this Melchizedek is an order that we are not even able to ascertain what it is. But we know it is a high order. It is an order of Melchizedek that we don't see anywhere as, I, again. This priesthood has no beginning, has no end. It's the priesthood of Jesus. This Melchizedek is the one that met with Abraham. And he tithed for Levi from his loins. Levi who now was to receive the tithes. Abraham gave a tithe to Melchizedek. I will share more on that in another teaching. Hebrews 5 verse 11. We have much to say about this. And it is hard to explain because you are slow to learn. Verse 12. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers... You need someone to teach you elementary truths of the word over and over again. You need milk, not solid food. I pray that not be your portion, my sister Celestine. 
Because by this time you ought to be teachers. And I thank God I see you teaching. You are a teacher already. I glorify God for that. Because you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word over and over again. You need milk, not solid food. Now listen, anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish between good, to distinguish good from evil. So it is an issue of maturity for you to distinguish between good and evil. Who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Verse number 14. Solid food is for the mature. Who by constant, who by constant, by constant, by constant, by constant, by constant, I say constant. You cannot just be eating the food one day. Uh -uh. It is by constant use what we've been doing daily, training ourselves daily, 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 daily to distinguish between good and evil. We cannot glory in this, our Father. We just humble ourselves and pray that God, you lift us at your proper time. For it is not for a man to announce himself. But you are the one who announces a man. So I pray for everyone watching that God, you will bring them to the place that you will announce them. That God, you announce them. For you are God all by yourself. You are able to do it over again and again and again. The elementary truths being released to us because we no longer live on milk. We eat the solid food which is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish between good and evil. This is a verse that is powerful, beloved of the Lord. This is a powerful, powerful scripture that we need to know about this. We need to keep it in our hearts. We need to hide it. We need to know it. We need to memorize it. We need to keep at, keep it, keep at it. Remain at it. But solid food is for those who are mature, who because of practice, have their senses trained to discern good and evil. <laughs> yes, what a joy, beloved, what a blessing. Ah, this is beautiful, beloved. This is beautiful, beautiful. Being in the presence of God is beautiful. Being in the presence of God is incredible. Being in the presence of God is incredible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Solid food is for the mature because of practice have their senses trained to discern between good and evil. You see this? You see this, beloved? It's powerful. We now head out to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians, the prayer. Hey, I'm telling you now, I really thank God that Ephesians is a prayer. Yani, the whole book of Ephesians from chapter 1 to chapter 6 is a prayer. We want to keep it as a prayer. We want to pray the book of Ephesians. And that when the time comes for reckoning, you, we will remember this time when we were going through this journey. Ah, We will come back to this. And we will remember this time. We remember this time. My sister Celeste, you will remember this time. The time of eating the solid food by constant use. Thereby knowing between the good and the evil. We know that God is upon us in the name of Jesus. Paul, an apostle of Christ, by the will of God, to the saints in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3. Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be made holy and blameless in the sight in love. He predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely, hallelujah, given to us in the one he loves. Verse 7. In him. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance, in accordance with the riches of his God's grace that he lavished on us 
with all wisdom and understanding. And he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times have reached their fulfillment, to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. And verse 11, in him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purposes of his will, in order that we who are first to hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And you were also included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you are marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Verse 15. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus, and your love for all the saints. I have not stopped giving thanks for you. Remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that God of our Lord Jesus Christ. The glorious father. May give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. In order that you may know the hope for which he called you. The riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. And his incomparably great power which is incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of the mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand side in the heavenly realm, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that, has been that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. All things are under the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. Far above all rule, all authority, all power, all dominion, every title that can be given, not only in this present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body. The fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Hallelujah. May the Lord fill everything in every way over your family. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord cause it to come to pass in your matter, in your situation, in your circumstance. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Revelation. Revelation 21. We are coming to an end of the broadcast as we are reading this wonderful scripture. Revelation 21. It says, Then I saw. You see that? Then I saw. This, I'm telling you this word is just powerful. Just that's that one sentence. Then I saw. Is that this is something that your spiritual eyes are open. I pray for you. May you open, may the Lord open your eyes. Ah, don't miss the prayer meeting. Let's go. To verse 1. It says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men. And he will live with them. They will be his people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. Verse 4. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He has seated. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. I pray for you. May the Lord make everything new in Jesus' name. May the Lord make everything new. Hey, please don't miss the prayer meeting. It says, Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is 
done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give him to drink without cost from the spring of water of life. From the spring of water of life. He who overcomes will inherit all this and will be his God and he will be my son. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the fairy lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Verse 9. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. Look at this divine heavenly technology now. Revelation 21 verse 10. This is technology of heaven. And he carried me away in the spirit. You see this? Angels. The angel of the Lord carried him away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city. Jerusalem coming down out of heaven of God. Look at this, beloved. In the time when Satan came to uh, tempt Jesus, he, Satan carried him also in the spirit to a place high. And he showed Jesus the kingdoms of the earth. He said, look, I have all these kingdoms of the earth. But this time now, John the Revelator has been carried away, carried up, carried away, carried away, Wait, carried away. Reka basha Teresa. My God. He's carried him away in the spirit to a mountain high and great and high. This is the place where we need to go in the spirit. Great mountain, great and high to be able to see the holy city. Now, where was this great mountain? High. Because this mountain is not in heaven, it's in the spirit. And in that mountain that he went, he saw Jerusalem coming out of heaven from God. So this mountain is not in heaven. This mountain is in the spirit. You must understand this thing, beloved, because you'll keep looking for mountains. You'll even go to Mount Sinai, you'll go to all these places, you'll go to Israel physically. But you'll not find God there. If you go there physically, you'll be a tourist. There are lots of tourists there, by the way. People who just go to tour the Holy Land, there are many. But this one, it says, it took him in the spirit to a mountain, great and high, and showed him the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. And then verse 21, 11, it says, it shone with the glory of God. And its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper. Clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with 12 gates and 12 angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, three on the west. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates, its walls. The city was laid out like a square as long as it was wide. It measured the city with the rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia in length and as high as it is wide. He measured its wall and it was 144 cubits thick by man's measurement, which the angel was using. The wall was made of jasper. And the city of pure gold, as pure as glass. The foundations of the city were walls. The, fo the foundation of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper. The second, sapphire. The third, chalcedony. The fourth, emerald. The fifth, sardonyx. The sixth, carnelian. The seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysophrase, the eleventh jacinth, the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The great, seat, the great street of the city was of pure gold, like transparent glass. It did not see a temple. I did not see a temple in the city, 
because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. Verse 23. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is the Lamb, is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day, hallelujah, on no day, ay, 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 will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful but only those whose names are written in the book, in the Lamb's book of life. Beloved of the Lord, as we come to the end of this wonderful time of transmission, where we were just proclaiming the abundance, we are releasing the abundance of God's word in the realm of the Spirit. Because I mentioned to you there is a famine that is coming. In the book of Amos, chapter Number 8 verse 11. It says that there is a coming a time where there will be a famine. Not just of food and water, but of the word of God. Beloved, let us store up the word of God in our hearts. Let us store up as much of God's word in our hearts as possible. Let us apply it as much as possible in our lives. Don't post it later. Do it now. Do it now. Say, I'm not going to remove myself from the prayer meeting. I will remain in the prayer meeting. Why? Because solid food is for those who are mature, who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. You can be able to discern, ah, ah this one is evil. Why? Because you have been constantly training. Eh? You've been constantly in the gym of God, reading the word of God. Shortly we shall be able to pray. So we need to conclude here and commence the prayer meeting on Google Meet. So if you are on our platform, on WhatsApp, you'll get the link. Also, we'll try and give you the link here on this one. And it will be active only in the hours of that day. So there'll be a new link with any video and it's always under the... Under the comment section that is if you are watching this on youtube and you would like to be part of the platform that receives these notifications kindly do write uh to the whatsapp number plus two five four seven two two zero eight seven zero eight seven if you've been blessed by this we are glad to receive the offerings on behalf of the lord to do the work of the lord that he has allowed us and also to enable us uh, you know, continue doing this the right way because that's the whole gospel. The gospel cannot be excused. It is the gospel. Let us now lead you to Christ if you are not born again. And for those of you who are here and uh, you have not led somebody to Christ, this is how you do it. Romans chapter 10 verse 9. It says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So I want you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I confess with my mouth that, you are Lord. that you are Lord. I believe in my heart. In my heart. God, raised you from the dead. God raised you from the dead. Write my name, Write my name in, the in the Lamb's Book of Life. I am born again. I am born again. The, old the old is gone. The new has come. The new has come. Fill, me Fill me with your Holy Spirit, with your Holy Spirit and, with your fire. and with your fire. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. 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 If you pray that prayer, you have received the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me pray as we conclude. May the Lord help you to redeem your vows. Any vows that you have vowed before him, go before him and make them fulfilled. If you did them in a rush, there is how to do it. Proverbs chapter 6. Do this, my son. Go to the point of exhaustion. That is a place of prayer. Telling God to cleanse you. Telling God to... You know, do a lot of things in your heart and this is the beauty that God is doing in our lives. So let's pray as we conclude. Father, we thank you for this time. 
We thank you also for the offerings, the most holy offerings that your children have given. We thank you, Lord, for um, the times that you have allowed us to pray. We thank you for our partners all around the world. We thank you, our Father God, for enabling us to come to a conclusion, even at this wonderful midday hour. So, Father, let your name be exalted even as we commence and enter into the time of prayer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Shalom. See you at the prayer meeting shortly. I will share with you the link. It's only 60 minutes in the presence of God. And then we'll catch up at midnight as the Lord helps us for the 90 minutes of glory. Shalom, 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 shalom. Barakah.